Good morning everybody and welcome to another video. Welcome to another canal video. Um, welcome to a windy canal video. A very windy canal video. <laughs> you join us right here, which is next to the start of the Somerset Coal Canal. The canal had some very unique engineering features, which we shall come to shortly when we get to Coombe Hay. But for the meantime, um, you join us on the western end of the Somerset Coal Canal. Timsbury Basin. So we've just stepped outside of the basin area because we found a little bit of um, the Timsbury Basin history. I love it when they put a sign up these places. Yeah, so basically, so the canal, here we are at the start, and it was to serve the whole Somerset coalfield of the Cam Valley and all of the mines and the collieries that were popping up or had already popped up, but they were previously using the roads around here, which were in a complete state by all accounts. So as everybody in the country was doing or trying to do, they were building canals and here was a perfect place to start. But they had a hill to deal with at Coombe Hay, or they had a whole valley of hill to deal with um, at Coombe Hay. Pictures taken which will plagiarise this sign throughout the day. I wonder if that's a spoil from the basins. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you can hear us over the wind. Um, but what you're looking at now is an aqueduct and the curvature of the canal. So the canal came from that direction there, around here, down and under here, which is where we are now, which is a lay-by, um, and basically went under a tunnel. Okay, so we're just walking a little bit further north just to see if we can uh, see the other side of the aqueduct. Yeah, I think the camera, Rebecca. That's probably some farm access, I would have said. But look at that, it survives. 220 years old, um, an aqueduct over, I'm guessing, farm access. Wow. That's amazing. That is amazing, isn't it? Okay, so we are now by the um, Locks Coombe Hay Locks on the Somerset Coal Canal. And we can now take a little bit of time to give you a little bit of history of the canal, um, what it was for. Somerset Coal Canal, oh, that's a great shot, Rebecca, look. <laughs> look at that, people. Is it slightly overexposed? I'm hoping that'll go in a little bit. There we go. Straight up the flight of locks there. Sorry, slightly distracted by the, the great little <laughs> shot that we saw there about the, the, the locks. Um, so, Somerset Coal Canal, built in uh, around 1800, and essentially it was built to overcome the problem of transporting coal by the roads. And it was time for the Somerset to join in to exploit the um, Somerset coal field, which they certainly did. At the time, along this section up here, there was 80 collieries, up to 80 collieries. Obviously, they weren't all here at exactly the same time, but 80 collieries tells you there's a lot of coal here. And Canal, at the time, was the height of technology, the peak of um, where they were with their transportation. So if you've been following our channel for a little while, you know that a lot of our research is into old railways. Um, disused railways, disused landscapes, abandoned railways. One of the things that we always pick up on is the plight of the person that built the line and the health and safety, especially of the railways. But when we look at some of the old canals, we realise that it was an even crazier time. And some of the schemes they came up with were beyond um, comprehension, certainly in our, in our lives, but perhaps even for the railway men of the day too. So the Somerset Coal Canal, and in particular this section, the Coombe Hay part, the hill, trying to get up and down the hill, really highlights that for us. They had three different ways they tried until they eventually settled on the more traditional lock gate. This really goes to underline the point of what I'm saying about the health and safety aspect, where there was less than zero consideration. And that was even for the passengers and the people that worked on the barges themselves, not just the navvies and the people that built the canals. But before we come to that, this little part of the canal is quite an important bit 
because right immediately behind us, almost exactly behind the camera there, the canal came up the hill here, and here is the turning point, right on this little peak, before it went almost back on itself. So the basin we're looking at here would have had boats coming in it, turning right round, almost 360 degrees, but not quite, maybe 340, 330, and then back on, continuing up the hill of the locks itself towards Castle and House. So method number one to try and traverse this hill in their canal boats was they patented a casson. Now a casson, in my uh, short experience with canals, is where they put a boat almost in another boat and then put up an incline plane. That's not the case. They tried to do almost a casson tunnel. So the barge itself, they would place in almost like a box. The box would be watertight in theory. Um, and they would then lower the box down or up, obviously, depending on which way you're going, um, to try and traverse uh, an incline, a, a, a hill. That simple. And they, they thought this was going to be a, such a great idea that they patented the idea and there's pictures all over the place where you can see this. Oh, we're still right now next to another lock. Yeah. That didn't work. I think the key point here was the word watertight and drop. And on a number of occasions, I think, certainly on their small scale version, they actually dropped a couple of boats and it was deemed too unsafe. Now, can you imagine getting your barge and going into a box, both ends being completely sealed either end, and then you're lowered down a shaft in your boat, in your box, and then you go through a tunnel and potentially you go into another castle, which is lockable, and then you go down again. I can't imagine anything more terrifying than you, that. You can't even get in a lift. I can't, I'm not really good with lifts. So <laughs> in a box, in a boat, on some water, which was dropped, um, I can't imagine what that's like. That is exactly what they did, and that's why attempt number one to traverse this hill failed. So just over the way there in the distance is Castle on the House, named so for obvious reasons. And we think almost in their driveway is the site where the first um, tunnel and the first castle bored into the ground and then came across. So it probably still exists to this day, but getting to it obviously would be impossible. It's probably sealed and of course it's on private land. But that is an incredibly important piece of history, um, pretty much in their driveway. random looking pit in the ground there. That reminds me very much of some of the um, shafts that we saw. What was it? Oh, the Thames and Seven. That looks like a shaft if ever was one. But we're in completely the wrong area for that. Surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that, people. That looks like a really purpose-built sort of start of a shaft. Oh, we're in the wrong area now. This is really exciting because we just, we're on this pathway now, level with the house. It's off in the distance. <clears throat> the reason why that's important is because this here, all the way along here, is this clearly purpose-built um, waterway. waterway. Clearly that is part of the old canal. Now, this comes all the way along the ridge of this hill. Now, if we go this way, it just stops. I wonder if this is an attempt for them to get the canal boats along here, and this is actually where <clears throat> Maybe the canal, the castle, went down. It stops there. The canal just stops there. We're level again. We're level with Castle House. Remember that. That's really important. Now they said the canal was lowered at Castle House. <clears throat> I'm not convinced. I reckon one of the attempts came up to here because all of this is dug out, clearly purpose built, and it stops just through the hedge there. Now you've got nothing the other side of that apart from a sheer drop down to where the the last set of locks are, and you've got nothing that way apart from a sheer drop too and there is that hole i saw just through the hedge there and i wonder if that was some kind of shaft that they used to build maybe the second castle or where they expect it to come out just down there okay so let's try and shed a little bit of light and put that into perspective what we've just been talking about because i appreciate it may not have been very easy to visualize so here is the brilliant rail map online who also does canals 
Um, and you can see the area that Rebecca and I have just walked up, which is following the mouse up here, up to the hairpin, and we walked back up what is here, which is a very steep gradient. I'll flick over to Google Maps because they do a brilliant 3D version of this. And if I just move that around there, you can see here's a canal, uh, and there is the hairpin. We've walked up the bridleway, well, the pathway, which is up to the top of this hill. So that there is quite a steep hill. Now, on our way here, we found in this woods just here, um, what we thought was looked like a shaft of some kind. Um, we then walked along here, which was the, the pathway, and we found obviously what we thought and unexpectedly is a, another part of the canal. So it turns out that there was an engine house in this woods here. This wood is called Engine House Wood. And it turns out this was the, the pumping station for the canal. Um, and they had a, uh, a canal built, presumably, to bring loads of coal up to the pumping house and um, yeah, supply it with coal. So Rebecca and I walked along this section here and we had wondered, because we didn't know there was a pumping house here, we'd wondered if this was part of the original Casson attempt to get down the hill. That would make a lot of sense to us. Now, it's worth pointing out at this stage that there is a lot of um, dispute about where these original enclosed Cassons were built. Here is Casson House. And I'll flick over to the map so you can see again, that's here. So this section here on Rail Map Online, and flicking back to there, that's a castle house. Now, the general consensus is the castle was built here. So pretty much in their driveway, and it went down towards this flagpole here, um, under the ground, and across and came out, we think, around about here. Rebecca and I wondered for a number of different reasons if actually, because there was talk of more than one attempt to do this, if this over here was potentially another attempt. Now, we've seen pumping houses before, the Kent and Avon Canal, Crofton, and to power the pumping house here, you would only need one canal boat full of coal for every two weeks. So a company that's strapped for cash to build this canal, would they really build a canal all the way along here, 400 yards, let's say, just to supply that with coal once every two weeks? Um, Crofton certainly, I think it was the, the guy's responsibility to literally wheelbarrow the coal he needed up to the, up to the pumping house. So there's a big question mark there as to why they would build a canal here. But if I zoom around, um, here we'll talk about a couple of other quick things first of all. So we've already talked about the locks and how the locks were the third thing that they built to get down this big hill. The first thing we already know because again we've talked about it is the internal uh, crazy casson locks that we think either went down here underground or potentially over there. That was possibly the first attempt. So the second attempt, when they realised the cassons weren't working, they were dangerous, they had faults, they dropped them inside their own sort of cistern or piston. When they realised it wasn't working, they built an incline. So similar to what we saw in, in the charred videos, the incline went from here, and you can see the line going all the way down there. And again, if I flick to Rail Map Online, that line there indicates exactly where that went. So it circumnavigated the need for the underground castles. Again, they didn't like that, possibly because it was dangerous. So they then built, after which they built um, the locks all the way down here. And I'll show you how many locks there were. If I click on that, um, you'll see every single one of those green dots all the way around here is a lock. So that was the, the end goal, was to build all of these locks around here. Um, after um, they had already built the incline, after they'd built the castle. So three different attempts to scale this hill, the first of which was possibly the craziest we've ever seen. Okay, so we're done with this section here. Sorry to waffle on. We will now head on over to the last bit of the canal we're gonna explore of the day, which was um, back towards Midford. Right, so I think we're walking well, we're at Midford and we think we're walking back along the canal now. Yeah, it's quite easy to follow this bit as well. Um, and we're actually obviously on the towpath itself now. There's the canal. Um, and presumably the whole rock face there was carved out when they built the canal because it's all obviously very, um, I say obvious, but I'm gonna say yes. And then maybe they used the earth to build the towpath um, on this southern side. I 
think what you're looking at there, just across the way, is a restored um, aqueduct, reading from my notes. So that was a little offshoot from the canal, which went perpendicular to it. I was going to say that the whole romance of just strolling along in a, in a canal barge as your strolling? job. Do you stroll well, in, a, in a boat? Floating along <laughs> in, a, in a, being pulled along by a horse or whatever. You, you kind of just assume that, uh, wow, what a beautiful lifestyle to have that as a job. Two day trip along the canal. Mm. And then you, then you think about the tunnels and the hardships of the navvies and the hardships of the people that built it. And you know, probably wasn't quite as romantic as we're making it out to be, is it really? No. Anyway. No. We can enjoy the infrastructure now. Yep. Little mile marker maybe over there, look. So from the, uh, the bank or the towpath of the Somerset Coal Canal, we shall bid you farewell. Um, there's a lot to explore along the Somerset Coal Canal. We probably haven't scratched the surface. Mm. But we've uncovered a couple of little quirky little things we need to do more research oh. on, haven't we? Going through a gate. Going through a gate. I suspect for some time to come now we shall be going through gates without using our hands, instead using our... There's even signs set up, use your elbows, which is great. Uh, well, although, your knees. Yeah. Right, so from uh, here we are. This is um, the end of our Somerset Coal Canal uh, jaunt. We hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it's been a rather... It's been every season day today. It's yeah. been um, cold, warm, hot, windy, wet. Yeah. It hasn't snowed. But, um, yet. yet. But uh, who knows? But it looks quite spectacular now. So anyway, right, we shall round off. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little video about the Somerset Coal Canal. Um, we're not going to go much further on now. We're going to walk a little bit further and see what we can find. But probably as far as Midford, I should imagine, is, is as far as we will need to get. Uh, because I think then it goes into a real canal at Dundas, Bath and Dundas. Mm, sounds about right. Um, but we shall bid you farewell. Thanks for watching and we'll see you uh, next week. Thank you.